Hey, I'm Kyle with iFixit, and I've got something special for you today. Normally, we're doing the teardown ourselves, but today I have brought the product engineering team to do the teardown together with me. Uh, this is uh, Jeremy and Elon from Shaper Tools. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks for having Hi. us. Thanks for having us. And their new product is Shaper Origin. This thing, they claim, is the future of woodworking, and we're going to find out if it's really true. I'm, uh, I'm very excited about this. This is a, uh, it's a, it's a router with CNC fanciness. So it's a, it's a computer controlled router that you can uh, supposedly uh, do all kinds of interesting woodworking with. So this is, I mean, this is relatively unassuming. You have the fancy box and I mean, this thing is gorgeous. Uh, let's get the box out of the way. Take a look at what this thing can do. At the center of this, we have we have a, a traditional uh, uh, router, which would be familiar in any wood shop, and you can use it to, to cut shapes or cut. You know, we'll use it to do you know nice corners on on tables. It is a computer controlled um, positioning system attached to the router. Basically, you are responsible for the coarse movements, and the tool does the fine movements for you. So you program in a shape that you want to cut. You can download it online or des design in any 2D or 3D CAD program. Put it on the tool or use on tool. Mm -hmm. software to design things as you go. It gets attached to the workpiece virtually. You follow it like in a video game, basically on the screen, and then the tool compensates for you in real time and makes sure you get the exact cut that you want, even if you don't have the steadiest hands ever. So that's how you're doing something like this, where this is a puzzle piece that would be very challenging to, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I would attempt to make that by hand. I mean, aside from just chiseling it very carefully, but the, 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 you can see this the seam, I mean, the, the tolerance on this is very, very tight. Mm -hmm. So how do, how, how do I make something like this? So to make something like this, you might design it in Illustrator or Inkscape or your program of choice. Uh, you would load it onto the tool. It's Wi-Fi connected or via USB. And then you would use shaper tape, this stuff here. All right. And apply that to your workpiece. That's how the tool can read in the workpiece and basically make an augmented reality version of whatever you're going to be cutting. And then you attach your work, your design file to that on the tools, on the tools touch screen. And you follow it and the tool does the rest of the work for you. Okay, so this tape is, I mean, these dominoes. I just put these out on the table in any pattern. Mm -hmm. How does it use this tape to know where it's at? Sure, so you put the tape down and you can see the tape has all these markers on it that look like dominoes. And each of those becomes a reference point, kind of like if you're trying to tell someone how to get to the gas station. You say, well, pass the hotel on the left and uh, pass the shell station on the right and you'll get to the BP station or something like that. Each of these, there's a camera located underneath, underneath there between the two lights and it's looking out. And when it sees a marker, it remembers, oh, that's, I remember where that marker was and it sees this marker. And by looking at a bunch of markers, it figures out where it's located. And so uh, what, what we're gonna do is, is do a scan here. So scan. And then I'm going to move this around and show it all the dominoes. And it's going to create a map of the workspace based on what it sees. Mm -hmm. And so how many, how many uh, lines of tape or how many dominoes do you need? So we typically put the tape, maybe this pitch or a little bit, you can go even wider. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like three to four inches between tape, uh, something like that. A little tighter if you plan on cutting through a lot of it because as soon as you cut through it, it destroys the dominoes. All right, well, and to show how approachable this is, let, let's, let's draw a shape on here. So I'm just going to pick a circle, and we'll say I want a two-inch diameter circle. Okay, and I can put it wherever I want, so we'll place it there. And so what I'm seeing is I've got on the screen, I've got the circle, and, and so as I move this around, it is helping me with the fine details. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really the magic is all I have to do is get it sort of in, in the right vicinity. And if I go too far out of the way, it's going to say, no, you screwed up, and it'll back off the tool. So how do I get inside this thing? Well, you tell us. You're the teardown expert. Okay, so I, the spindle on the front, this is kind of a separate uh, unit. And as part of the normal uh, calibration press, I can unplug this. And then I need a hex key. And... Loosen that, and I can remove the spindle. So this is how you do tool changes. This is fairly straightforward. We will set that aside. And this comes off. All right, so I have not given any thought ahead of time to how this thing comes apart. I think I'm gonna start with the back. 
What's your favorite torque size? <laughs> <laughs> T6 is the most common size uh, used on cell phones today. So that's that's probably our favorite. Okay, back plate. There we go. Cool. Wow. Okay, so to kind of guess at what I'm seeing here. And we might do a little more teardown, actually. You want, uh, right, before I start guessing. Yeah, I would yeah. start taking more stuff out. Okay. Um, we can take the sawdust thing out. And then now we got larger torques. You see, is this more nerve wracking for you or for me? <laughs> Well, we've done this teardown many, many times. We've done so it many times. So you gotta watch. It's fun to watch someone else do it. So. All right, go for it. Give me. <laughs> so for this shoulder. Yes. This is where the cable comes in, and so, so you I need, need to, to disc remove yeah. the cable lugs. So what, what? Something I really like about this is you plug it into power and it's on. Mm -hmm. And you, you're working on anything, you can yank the power, you can plug it in, and that exactly fits with my power tool workflow. But that's not a workflow that I associate with any of my electronic devices. Yeah, I mean that's the paradigm we were going for. We want it to feel super robust. It's constantly saving what you're doing as you go, um, so that you feel like you can, you know, treat it like a, a piece of precision machinery, but also a tool and something that you can use to get work done. So now I've got that off. There is a snap right okay. in right that in inner here. edge there, and so you just want to... That one... Pull it yeah, there. like that. Yeah. There you okay. go. It's nice having the, the, the expert here. That's where the hidden snap is. There's and a lot of times we're, we're pulling on something and we'll break it, the tab yeah. off. And, and be careful because the wires, so now the AC wires go in okay. to the power system there. Got it. So if I want to get to a point where I can just take this power cable away, because it's getting in my road, this looks like another Torx T10. Do you have any capacitors in here I need to worry about? You should be fine. Okay, we're good. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Great. Should come yeah, out. It's probably the gas getting pressed in there. Great. Okay. All right, so we've got uh, two stepper motors here, and I see they are labeled R and L, and it's I guess that's the way if I'm looking at it here, that's right. Uh, so you've got a driver board for each, and then is everything integrated in, in one main PCB? How many PCBs do you There's have? There's a lot of PCBs in here, which okay. you'll see as you continue to take it apart, kind okay. of because the unique form factor things need to be in lots of different orientations. And so it seems like there's more power driver circuitry on the bottom, and then as I move up more... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what direction would you suggest I head next? Eventually, we want to get the touch screen off. Mm -hmm. What's so, the next step? Well, we have to decide if we want to go more towards the mechanical stuff next or the electrical stuff next. Great. Maybe taking the base off might be a good next thing. All right, or? yeah, let's do the mechanical side. I'm going to be at this for a little while. Easy enough. And there's a flimsy wire down here. Okay, so this is just two pins going to the touch off weight sensor mm -hmm. and that's that's detecting when the device is lifted off the table yeah so talk me through what am i seeing here so this is our xy mechanism and it's pretty non-traditional when you typically see xy mechanisms they're normally uh at two axes that are perpendicular to each other and they're stacked on top of each other mm -hmm. so so what's the part that's moving here well you can grab the carriage on the other side and wiggle it around and you'll grab. see wow so this is entirely linkage based. If you look inside, it's we, when we take, actually this might be the next thing to take off, is if we take off these All two right. plates, then you'll really see. Let's take off the plates. So you've got a bearing built into this part. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we have here, this is. And I can hold this up a little bit so you can. So I can move the motors. And so, and I can feel each individual step. Now we're going to move on to figure out how it moves up and down in the Z direction. So as I take this last screw out, is it going to fall down on me? I it shouldn't fall out completely, but I would support it. See, this this feels like cheating having you here to <laughs> give me hints. And so before you take that totally out, I'll just hold this here for you. And, and you'll want to remove the cap. So you, were you able to design the assembly line to minimize tool change? Like, does every step have a different size tool in the assembly line? So that's one, one consideration, is trying to minimize uh, the number of tool changes and uh, minimize the number of torque setting changes and things right. like that. Keep, get it out of that. Oh, and then there's a little, okay, great. So 
just come out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so what I've been interested and curious about the whole time is the electronics. How did you do a touch screen that was so responsive? So let's let's take a look at that. Okay, so to get the touch screen assembly off, there's uh, two bolts here on the side, and you okay. can loosen those, and that'll allow you to lift the touch screen up. These are a lot larger Torx screws than I've been accustomed to with our. That's pretty slick. So I'd say you win on repairability points for this. It <laughs> seems like uh, getting the screen off is going to be relatively straightforward. Ribbon cable, and there it's free. Look at that. Okay, so I've got a uh, touchscreen assembly, and we've got PCB here. So are the brains of the device in the main unit or on here? They're in the main unit. So okay. the main processor and everything is back here. That's the part that has the heat sink on it. It gets it. hot. Um, and, and then so everything else is basically peripherals. And let's go back over and talk about the... Should I take the fan off? We can take the fan off. We can also get to the, the vision, the computer vision subassembly if you want to do that. That's in there. Yeah. Okay. We could also take, if you're interested, we could take... Yeah, we could take the, the whole tower, tower off the so tower you don't have to be off. leaning okay. on the base, too. Sure. That might be a good one. And again, once once the base comes off, you want to be careful because there's cables going to the handles uh, right. and also going down to the uh, touch sensor. And start unplugging things. Yeah, so those guys go to the encoder interfaces for the closed loop control as well as the handle buttons. And then those go to the stepper motors. So talk, talk to me about the handle buttons. I mean, I understand, you know, start, stop. That makes sense. But what wh walk me through the, the guide, you kind of an additional guided mode. Yeah, the so the, the handle buttons at any time uh, emulate the functionality on the screen, with the goal being of we want you to keep your hands on the handles for as, as much time as possible while you're cutting. Um, but yeah, uh, red, is, red is stop, green is go, basically. But in small areas with lots of detail, you can hold the green button down and it'll go into an automatic mode and progress through as much of the corrective range as possible. So for really small, intricate designs, the machine will basically do it all for you. Got it. Right, yeah, it has two different ways of working. One is where it's constantly trying to follow you and keep up with where you move. And the other is where you're following it and mm -hmm. it's trying to just constantly move as far as it can. So this is your power supply? That's the AC-DC. Yep, okay. so that's supplying all the all the power for the stepper motors and the computer that's on board. Got it. And the computer is here. So I want to get the computer. Okay. I'm going to back the smaller screws. <laughs> and now we just unplug the fan unplug there. Unplug the fan. You should be able to lift it out. It might be hard to get past the zip tie. There you go. Okay. Cool. All right, straightforward heat sink. Is that Broadcom? It's a NXP. NXP, okay. Freescale. I'm not very familiar with Freescale's product line, so why don't, why don't you, you save me the Googling and tell me what it is? It's an IMX6 application okay. processor. Okay. Um, so similar to power to what you would find in a cell phone from a few okay. years ago. Um, and then on that board there is the communications and the application processor, memory, uh, flash, flash and RAM. Okay. Uh, all that good stuff. And that's all on this daughter board. Mm -hmm. That's all on the daughter board. Uh, and then there's more electronics underneath the daughter board. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, at the computer, uh, at the vision sensors. So we got the camera module tucked in here, and we've got this metal bracket we need to remove. I would imagine the calibration on the vision system is kind of important. It is, and that's, you know, it ha that's why it has to be a really well-built machine. You don't want stuff to move once you calibrate right. it. All right, try it now. Okay. So now I've got the camera system out. Well, and then, I mean, this is pretty much it. So you've got, can I peel up the foam here? Oh yeah, I guess you have to peel the foam to get to the screws underneath it so you can remove the PCB. Okay, so here's our camera PCB and we've got, you've got your own stamp flex cable. Okay, and, uh, and this is a standard smartphone camera, it looks like. Basically. And then some very large LEDs. So, but, but this is the difference between a smart tool and, and a router of the past is being able to sense and understand the context of where mm -hmm. it's at. 
Now that I've got the camera out, we can pretty much see everything inside this. This is an incredibly complex piece of machinery. It's effectively a little robot. It's a little, it's a little woodworking robot. But I like that it's a, it's, it's more of a helper. It's augmenting my natural capabilities. I can see enough to uh, guide it accurately, but I can't physically <laughs> guide a router accurately by hand. So having a having a robot to help is really exciting. And I think we, we've been talking about home robots for a long time that help you do household tasks. Maybe maybe we're going to end up with robots in the workshop before we have them in the kitchen. <laughs> That's what we're betting on. And Origin and Shaper is all about human in the loop robotics. We think that humans can be involved and be creative and make amazing things. And then robots can be used to give us superpowers and make us even better at doing those things. Well, thanks so much for joining me. This is an absolute blast. Really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, us. it was a lot of fun. And for all of you watching at home, check out shapertools.com and give us a follow down below.